Hello my friends. I'm just down here in the garden. I'm going to gather up some plantain and I'm going to show you how to make a really easy salve. It's great for insect stings, insect bites, for the itching, the swelling, even the pain. I, I use it uh, raw. You can just take a leaf, chew it up, uh, spit it out on your uh, bee sting and uh, within minutes uh, the pain is gone and the swelling and itching that sometimes happens over the next few days for some people it happens to me uh, takes that away also so it's really easy to do I'll show you some of the things that uh, it helps with I don't know if it helps with uh, Malinois but it certainly helps with wasps hornets and bees and things like stinging nettle which is common in gardens you know, so if you're outside, maybe you get stung or you're uh, weeding and get a rash, this is the thing for you. Super easy to make, super easy to find. Let's look at it. Here you have some uh, stinging nettle. This here is the stinging nettle. It's probably the most common irritant for gardeners. It'll grow up in between your other plants and you'll be weeding and just brush up against it. it feels like pin prickle that paralyzed your hand went to sleep kind of feeling almost but more irritating and uh, yeah plantain will take that right away. Works great. Lasts a long time. Draws the toxins and all the irritants out of your skin. It's really nice. Another source of pain and irritation in the garden is stinging insects. Now as a beekeeper, you can imagine, I get stung once in a while. I have a, quite a few bees and uh, I don't always wear a full suit or gloves when I'm dealing with them, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, it's quicker just to do it than uh, suit up or whatever. And it's easier to handle everything without the gloves. Uh, you kill less bees, they, don't, they get less irritated. Generally, most of the time, if you can control the time of day and, uh, you know, it's not the wrong time of year, there's not a storm coming, uh, bees are pretty good to deal with without the suit. But you do get stung. Uh, so over the years, I found uh, plantain works great. Uh, when I first started getting stung by my bees, I would swell up and I'd get an itch under the skin and no matter how much you scratch, it wouldn't help and felt like you're gonna scratch your skin off. Now I just apply plantain to a bee sting. The pain's gone in minutes, I'd say seconds, but I don't wanna overrate, you know, and then someone, oh, it's the pain's still here, and then two minutes later it's gone. But yeah, no, this stuff does work. You can trust me, I get stung by bees. I don't like it. The plantain works great. So let's go take a look at the plantain and the things you'll need. Okay, to make the salve, you'll need three ingredients. You need beeswax. You need a carrier oil, something like an olive oil, or you know, there's other oils you can use, food grade oils, coconut oil, uh, depending on what you want to use on your skin. But uh, olive oil is probably the most common and will probably last the longest in a salve to my knowledge. Coconut oil might last longer but if you don't want the smell of coconut then olive oil is neutral. So here's some beeswax that I'll be using. This or some uh, cappings wax I have up at the house but you can get wax off Amazon fairly cheap or from your local beekeepers they'll make us happy. And here's uh, your other two ingredients. I just had some extra virgin olive oil I got at Costco, I think. And uh, a jar to put everything in. It depends on how much you want to make, but the recipe I'll be showing you is one cup of oil. So a little pint jar, <clears throat> 500 milliliter jar will be large enough. So, 
in the middle there you see is plantain. Now plantain comes in a broadleaf variety like this. And it comes in a long leaf variety. And it's more like a spear like shape, spear tip shape. But uh, I don't have any of that growing in my yard, so I can't show you. I can show you this variety. This is very common, especially where I live. Anywhere you'll walk, you'll find it. Uh, in between this cracks in the sidewalk and your driveway, uh, it grows throughout your lawn. Oftentimes, uh, like if you brush up against stinging nettle, just look down within feet of the stinging nettle will be uh, one of these growing. Uh, same with the beehive. I mean, uh, when I first started using plantain, uh, I was just grabbing a leaf where I got stung. And you can just uh, roll it up, chew it up, make sure it's, uh, you know, well chewed and moist and then uh, apply it to the skin it works pretty good or you can make it into a salve carry a small jar with you when you're out uh, outdoors doing outdoorsy stuff and uh, it's great on mosquito bites uh, great on things you don't even know what happened you get a little bit of hives or an itch or a rash or something uh, it's you know other people have said it's good for for all a variety of things that they suffer from as far as sores and itches and whatnot, but I can tell you for sure it works on uh, bee stings and wasp stings, hornet stings. But to identify it, there's a nice close look at it if it'll focus on there. That's the top of the leaf. Quite common as one of the weeds that pop up between your ro rows of vegetables. Has these spines going down. And then when you tear the leaf, there's these latex, I don't know how well you can see it. If I zoom out a bit. But there's these uh, little stringy things that hold the leaf together. So if you're not sure if it's plantain. You can tear it apart. You should get these, I don't know, I want to say latex like filaments uh, holding the leaf together. And as you can see, my uh, helper is very helpful in the garden, helping to pick the plantain. It's also edible, so it's safe for the dog to chew on and eat, but I prefer not to have the dog in there. so. We're going to go over and find some more of this, but I thought this was a good view of what the plant looks like and what the leaf structure is and how it looks. Okay, so you have to identify it. If there's lots of better videos, some botanists will show you and tell you more about the plant itself. I'm just going to show you how to make a salve out of it that uh, works on stings and bites and itches and such that you encounter when you're outside. So, let's go pick some plantain. Alright, for this I don't really have to forge around or pick stuff out of my driveway. Uh, one of my uh, beds here, to my, one of my strawberry beds, has quite a few weeds growing up in it. And it just so happens that most of it is plantain. So, I'm just going to take my uh, 500 milliliter mason jar. I'm not going to worry too much about taking the leaves, washing them, or drying them or anything. I'm just simply going to pick them. The stem is fine too. And even the stem, when you pick it off, has those latex things in it. So the dog's going to help me. I may need another lid for this now. Yeah. yeah, the weeds is bad anyways, instead of composting this or uh, tossing it out, this would be good use for it. You want to jam in as many as you can. Now you'll see uh, 
See people drying it first. You are extracting the uh, medicinal components, the active ingredients with an oil. So it makes sense to dry it out a bit. But I also want everything just as it is in the plant when it's most effective. But again, if you get uh, you need to use this plant. You don't have an extract, you want to, because this is going to take a couple weeks. Uh, you can just simply chew it up. Chew it up and then spit it onto your, uh, make like a paste. And then uh, cover your wound with the paste. This is also edible. Has soothing properties for your intestine. So if you get food poisoning, maybe you drink some bad water in the wild, you can make a tea with this, or you can just eat it raw, or you can chop it up and add it to your food. I've added it to food, and no one even noticed. Has a not quite spinach taste to it, but. Yeah, it's a very healthy plant. I suggest, you know, looking it up, checking it out. <clears throat> it's very useful. And I mean, you don't have to uh, even try to propagate it. Here I basically have a 4 by 8 garden bed full of it. Uh, you can let it grow amongst your plants. Although it does have a shallow root system that is uh, very vigorous. So when you pull it out, you'll end up with a big root ball. So it does disturb the soil. <laughs> Better to pull them out when they're small. They have a small root. But the leaves and stem are very useful. I'm sure the root is too. For this, I'm just going to use the, the leaves because I have plenty of them. I'm not going to wash them. Uh, no need to really. If I were collecting a large amount, I collect it in a colander or something that was perforated so any bugs or dirt or anything on it would fall through. But since I only need a small amount, basically one cup of oil to one ounce of uh, beeswax will make a wonderful salve. And of course you can adjust by putting less oil, more wax, less wax, more oil, to make the right consistency that you like to rub on your skin, or depending on your climate, which one stays solid in a container in your pocket. So you don't want, uh, you want to have something runny everywhere. That's dandelion, which is also good in extracts. If you have arthritis or something, you can make something similar to this or if you have arthritis and you're making this and you add dandelion to it also there you go rub that on your arthritis it's very good or claim to be I don't have arthritis so I can't say for certain normally the dog would be corrected but it's my fault for trying to make a video And trying to watch the dog this morning also. But yeah, if your animals chew on plantain, don't be worried. It's good for them, so they probably won't chew on it. All right? But yeah, it's simple as that. Just collect up as much as you want. I didn't have to go far. I didn't have to search for it. I also know what it looks like, so it's no issue. But again, I showed you how it has the filaments. And you pull it apart, and you see little filament hairs coming off. Probably can't in the camera. You pull a leaf from the stem, it's an easy way to get it. But yeah, so I just jammed it in there. Want some uh, head space. I don't want uh, too much in there that I don't get a cup of oil, but this should be 
at least a cup and a half oil. <laughs> Dogs are in circles. All right, here it is. So I'm just going to add this uh, extra virgin olive oil. This is going to be the carrier oil for the organic components that I want. I'm going to fill it right to the top. And I got a little bit of dirt in there for my fingers. Well, I'm not going to eat this stuff. Dog sounds like he's trying to eat something. All right. I leave myself a little bit of headroom there. I'm going to push it down with something. I don't have a clean finger. I want everything submerged in the oil. As well as can be. Now well, I've gone and lost the lid again. I think I had some help with that. Oh yeah, yeah. The dog is not very good at helping me with YouTube videos. All right, so that's all there is to it. You get a stick or something, poke down around and get the air bubbles out, and then top it off with oil. Okay, now I'm going to sit this in the window for 10 days to two weeks. And the sun is almost going to be like a, like a deep fryer, but it's going to extract over time. They're all the good stuff that I want. And then we'll do the next step. All right, here's all the ingredients you'll need. I have one ounce of beeswax. This is a fresh honeycomb. There's no honey in it, or if there is, very little. And then my jar of my pint-sized jar of plantain with olive oil. This is sat in the sun at least 10 days uh, it's been a couple weeks 10 days would be fine so I'm just gonna melt this into this oil but first I have to separate the oil so I have a bowl of a strainer and I have this in there, some cheese cloth this is from the dollar store. I don't know if it costs a dollar, but it actually has a price on it. Okay, so dollar twenty-five from the Canadian dollar store. So yeah, it's real simple. Just pack your plantain in a jar, let it sit somewhere where the sun's hitting it. Strain out because you don't want the leaves in your salve or little bits of anything. I'll get the majority of it out of there. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute and then I'll bring you back. All right, to uh, warm up the oil and combine the beeswax with the oil, I'm going to use uh, this container. I think it came with a uh, candle making kit off Amazon. I can't remember, but uh, it's for melting wax. I'm pretty sure it's some cheap thing I got off Amazon a couple of years ago. 
So it has a little wax in it, won't hurt anything. So what I've done is I strained a cup of oil. So it was very nice, a pint uh, jar gave me a cup of oil and a little bit extra, but not so much that's wasteful. Uh, so I'm going to just simply put this into here. It has like a dark tinge to it, maybe a, from the green. It's definitely uh, darker than the bottled version of this oil. And again, it's just pure virgin olive oil. So nothing, nothing fancy. Everyone has access to olive oil. Okay, so into this, I'm going to start putting my beeswax. Right? And that looks like a lot, but as you can see, all that calm, this is mostly air. If I squished it down, <clears throat> it would be very small. But leaving it big like that, it will melt quicker. So, you don't want to put this on direct heat. And anything you do with beeswax in the kitchen, uh, you don't want to use your good cookware, your wife's good cookware. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a pot with a ruined finish on the bottom. So I'm just going to do it like a double boiler kind of thing, but I'm just going to insert this into the water. Now, all the health benefits and everything from the compounds you've extracted into the oil can be destroyed at high temperatures. So I'm just going to turn this on uh, low heat and uh, let it heat up very slowly. And into that I will melt this one ounce of beeswax. So again, it's one ounce of beeswax to one cup of oil. And that could be, uh, again, coconut oil, you can add uh, shea butters, and whatever you like to it. This is just your basic recipe. Okay, so I chose olive oil because it, it lasts a long time, especially if you add some vitamin E. But the, as an antioxidant, what plantain specifically is an antioxidant high in antioxidants I mean to say uh, so that help will help preserve the oil is simply by uh, putting the plantain in it but you know creams and lotions and all that for your skins uh, you may want to go fancier than just your plain olive oil and beeswax like I'm doing like I said you can add your shea butter and you can add uh, all kinds of stuff right so avocado oil coconut oil whatever you want so I'm gonna let this heat up real slow again uh, turning up the heat would speed up the process but you're going to degrade all those uh, biological compounds that are beneficial and we want those in the salve because those are what's going to draw out the toxins from the bee stings or the acids from the stinging nettle it is going to neutralize the itch and the burning pain and reduce swelling. It's just wonderful, but if we heat it up, it'll destroy that. So if you're following along at home making your own, this is probably the most important thing right here to pay attention to. Do it on very low heat, as low as you can, and uh, be patient. So I'll bring you back when it starts melting or is almost all melted. So it's only been about a minute on uh, low heat. I stuffed all that whole ounce of uh, beeswax in there. And it is melting in because uh, that was quite a large mass of wax that filled the whole Tupperware container. I think this was full of wax. So even on low heat, it, it melts pretty quick. And like I said, you want to avoid damaging the uh, 
efficacy of the product you're making here. I think that's the right word. It's probably not. <laughs> it popped in my mind. Okay, so the effectiveness of this, like I said, uh, will be affected by uh, high temperatures. So, so on low heat, and this is what it looks like as it's melting. So even the short time I've had the camera on again, it's mostly melted in. You can use like a chopstick. Uh, don't use your good utensil because the wax will dry onto it. It's hard to clean. Just easier if you use things that aren't important to you. A chopstick, this is a Dairy Queen, you know, plastic spoon. There's a bunch of them around. They're good for uh, doing canning and stuff because they're not metal. But chopsticks would be really useful. Yeah, you want to keep stirring it as it melts. It'll melt pretty quick. So even on low heat, you're not saving yourself a bunch of time by turning it up. You're just ruining the product. So I'll stop harping about it and I'll bring you back when uh, it's uh, ready to go. Alright, I set a timer on the stove, the oven. Set a timer on the oven to uh, see how long this actually takes. So right now, from putting this in and turning on the heat, it's about 15 minutes. 15 minutes and 20 seconds or something. And uh, I just saw the last speck disappear before I turn the camera on. Yeah. So I'll give it a good stir. I'm not going to take it off the heat. But I am going to move the camera and show you pretty much the last step. She's done. Okay, I just have these little uh, containers. I think this is for one ounce, maybe two ounce. I can't remember now. bought them years ago, a bunch at one time. They're really great for, I put guitar polish in or this salve, right? <clears throat> so you just leave it on the, once it's all melted together and stirred well, just leave it, uh, Oh, and I sit it on uh, paper towel here because you don't want wax and all that. It just makes a mess. Paper towel is disposable. Okay, so you have this in a. I do have a rag here. Tea towel. I'm just going to dry off the bottom of this container so that it was sitting in the water bath, the hot water bath, I guess. Would have been a more accurate description than a double boiler. Okay, now I've turned off my stove. And, but you want to keep this warm right till you're going to pour it. I hope I don't pour it everywhere. I'm using my left hand here. And you want to be fairly quick. I'm trying not to make a mess because uh, when it dries, it is wax. We'll stick to everything. So these are great taking camping just outside with you, having it handy in the house. I'm just going to pour the excess into a bowl here for now. I don't have enough containers for it. But yeah, that's all there is to it. It's a little darker than the uh, color was originally, which is nice to see. Obviously something has changed with it. And again, do it on low heat, you won't damage uh, the healthy ingredients, right? So now I'm just going to let this dry. Dry. I'm going to let this cool and solidify. Um, if you want to test it at any point, what you do is you just take some, I like the spoon here, and you can see here there's some in the groove. It's cooled already. You can get it on your finger to see if it's the consistency that you want on your skin. Well, it's not quite cool. It's a little bit messy. But looks good to me for now. I'll check it again before. And I'm not selling it or anything. This is for personal use. And uh, 
few other people might use it. It's also great on animals because you can't put medicine on their cuts or wounds very easily. Uh, they'll just lick it off, right? And it's not good for them. Uh, if you put this on a dog's wound or something or a cat, they, they can lick it off. It's, it's totally non-toxic, right? It's uh, olive oil and uh, plantain which is actually beneficial to intestinal health so you know licking it off is no problem even if you end up licking it off something by accident you know we got on your fingers or something and go and eat but uh, yeah I'll bring you back and show you the finished product alright my friends I've let it sit for uh, 24 hours it's hardened into a kind of a paste or whatever Stuck. See, you can see I stick my finger in it, but it's not going to drain out or leak out in your pockets. I'll just put lids on it all, and uh, yeah, it'll be good for uh, for at least the rest of this season, probably through the winter or whatever. I'll make some more next spring. But uh, like I said, it's great for all the irritating vegetation. You know, your stinging nettle, your poison oak, your poison ivy, uh, whatever else you brush up against you may not even know what it is it's irritating your skin rub some of this on it everything from mosquito bites to hornet stings uh, it's great for my honeybee stings you know wasps I'm sure any any other insect that bites or stings it irritates you you know I'm not going to suggest it's good at drawing out the toxins from a rattlesnake or something but as far as insects and plants <clears throat> it's great at drawing out the toxins from your skin preventing that uh, long-lasting itch or swelling uh, that you get from say a honeybee sting uh, if I don't use this I, I will swell up and get an itch and I just don't overall feel right and uh, yeah I use this it gets rid of that itch and that swelling and the pain immediately so this is a wonder salve I wouldn't show it if it didn't work very easy to make you can use the same process to extract uh, uh, components from any plant that you want to use as a skin or body salve, right? Ointment. And this is also good for your animals. It's safe for them to eat. So you can apply it to a cut or a wound. It's safe on that. It has uh, the wax, right? Is raw, raw beeswax from my highs. So it has antimicrobial components to it. It's great antiseptic, antibiotic for for your animals. You put this on a cut or something, they can lick at it. It's perfectly fine for them to ingest. This is perfectly fine for you to ingest. I don't suggest you do that. You know, you know, it tastes that great, but it won't do anything to you. It's perfectly fine, food safe. So it's great if you can get it on your skin, use it. Uh, it's not going to cause an issue, right? It's not like spraying on. Uh, insect repellent or something right it's perfectly 100 percent natural and organic so yeah if you found any of this interesting or entertaining even uh, please subscribe give me a thumbs up join me here on the channel as a friend I'm always ha happy and welcoming new friends and looking forward to get to know you all so I hope you're having a great day wherever you are whenever you watch this peace